Hello, this is Hannah, and welcome to the second episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. Each episode focuses on a topic to do with personal development and self-growth. For more information about Becoming Who You Are, you can take a look at the website at www.becomingwhoyouare.net. You can also email me with your questions and comments at hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net. I wanted to spend this episode talking about who personal development is for. I remember having a conversation with a friend when I was seeing a therapist a few years ago. She said she thought it was great and added that she thought everyone could use being in therapy at some point or words to that effect. I think I know what she meant by that, but I disagree. I don't think everyone would benefit from therapy or personal development for that matter. I think to benefit from these things, to really be able to dig deep and do the hard work, we have to be in a certain place. There's nothing wrong with not being in that place, don't get me wrong, but I don't think that personal development is for everyone. Talking about counselling, therapy, personal development or topics related to this carries a stigma for some people, as I mentioned in the last episode. And I think a lot of that stigma is to do with a misperception in society that you would only engage in therapy or any kind of personal development practice if you were sick, or if there was something wrong with you, wrong with your life, or wrong with your ability to function properly. I know that there are lots of different reasons why people go to see a counsellor or therapist, or decide to embark on their own personal development journey. It doesn't mean that they're sick, though. Usually it's actually the opposite. Recognising an internal conflict, a pattern of feelings or behaviours, difficult life situations or any of the many other factors that can lead people to seek counselling is actually a very healthy response. It already shows that person has a level of self-awareness and to some extent an acceptance of their feelings as well, at least an acceptance that they might not feel very happy right now. Personal development is for people who are curious about themselves who want to learn more, who, in therapy, are willing to open up to another human being, maybe not all the way, but as much as they can right now. It's about taking risks, facing parts of ourselves that we might not be so comfortable with, and seeing if we can find the courage inside ourselves to accept those parts. It's not a smooth process. We might discover things about ourselves or the people around us that lead us to rethink our life choices, our relationships, our careers, and so on. Dynamics in existing close relationships might change, with our partners, family members, close friends or managers. We can't tell what's going to happen before we start. I couldn't have told you five years ago that I would be where I am, doing what I'm doing today. And uncertainty can be difficult to live with. The thing about personal development is that it's worth it, but at times it's tough. You have to really want to do it. I've known people who talk the talk, but maybe without realising it, don't walk the walk. What I mean by that is that a lot of people talk about doing personal development. They read books, they meditate, they journal, but ultimately they don't address their core beliefs or defences. This is understandable. Our defences and beliefs develop for very good reasons, and often they're coping or survival mechanisms left over from childhood. It's a scary, scary thing to examine and possibly let go of them, as it leaves us vulnerable to those things our defences are trying to protect us from. However, not letting go of them or not accepting them means that people can repeat the same patterns again and again and wonder why they seem to meet the same barriers in the same situations. This might be that they can't seem to hold down a job, that they always end up in relationships with people that they're not happy with, they're always in crisis, they're always broke, and so on. It's not that personal development isn't right for those people. After all, there's a reason why people engage in it. It's just that there might be parts of them right now that are feeling very self-protective and it feels too difficult to accept those things that otherwise could become clear. Like I said in the first episode, one of the principles that I work with is that people know what's best for them. I'll go into this more in a future episode, But I believe that even when people are doing things that we might describe as self-harming or self-destructive, they're doing it from a place of self-protection, perhaps because certain feelings are too painful to sit with, or the reality of their situation feels too overwhelming, or for other reasons. I guess what I'm saying is that self-acceptance is a beautiful thing, but it is a hard road. It's also an up-and-down, ongoing process. I used to think that there was an end goal, 
and it was a pretty rude awakening to realise that there wasn't. I found that when I'm able to take a risk, accept my defences, be aware of my defences, and show more of myself in certain situations, I reap incredible rewards for doing so. I feel more free, more alive, more courageous, and more at home with myself. I would say personal development is for you if you're willing to take that risk and be yourself, even when what you find is uncomfortable and hard to digest, because those moments and those times when you feel whole, safe, settled, and at peace with yourself are more than worth it. I'd like to end each podcast episode by giving you details about a resource that I found really helpful and you might too. Today's resource is a great little website I used to use before I moved my journaling offline. It's called 750 Words and you can find it at 750words.com. The idea behind the website is taken from a book and a course called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. She suggests doing something called morning pages, which is a stream of consciousness brain dump every morning before you get going with your daily routine. Buster Benson, the creator of 750 Words, took that principle online and has now created a wonderful journaling site where you can enter your 750 words, get statistics about your entries, and even earn badges for completing a certain number of days in the row. I found the website to be very charming and would recommend checking it out if you're interested in journaling. Thank you so much for listening. Remember you can find more material like this as well as resources, tools and much more at www.becomingwhoyouare.net. I look forward to talking to you very soon.